This video is going to be about defense, how to build the best defense in Madden, how to build the def best defense in college football. And we're going to be deep diving and really just having a conversation about defensive schematics and kind of what you could think about it. We're going to be doing this through the lens of really my favorite defense of the year, uh, which is this dollar defense. And there's a lot you can do with this dollar defense. We're actually rocking this out of the 46 uh, playbooks. We do have access uh, to the cover two press, which is super good. We also have... Uh, just free safety zone blitz as well. So uh, why is dollar so good? And really what makes a defense good? We're going to be talking about that in this video. We're also going to be talking about how to adjust and kind of how that goes as well in terms of like labbing adjustments and really what to do, you know, just on the entirety of the defensive side of the ball. So at the biggest core of Madden, of college football, of NFL, of every football game, defense is, in my opinion, really difficult and if you for you to play good defense in Madden really it revolves around a couple of key strategies so the first thing that is really fundamental and foundational to the defense side of the ball is defense is all about the ability to basically constrain space and one of the ways that you can do that best is through having a a blitz if you look at the best defenses in Madden over the last 10 years, it is very rare that you're going to find a, a comp level solid defense that is not built upon having a, a good blitz. You pretty much have to consistently have a good blitz. If you don't have a good blitz, then your opponent is going to, especially at a high level, your opponent is going to, you know, just be able to sit back and, you know, basically pick you apart. So you have to have a good blitz. It's super, super fun fundamental and important uh, to defense. The other thing that has been a little bit more kind of becoming more widely understood is to have a good defense in Madden. You need to be able to make good adjustments, right? Most formations are not going to be able at, at the at the highest level they're not going to be able to be defended by just calling the same adjustments over and over again, right? And generally, even if you are calling the same adjustments, you're probably doing something, right? Stock cover three, stock cover four, stock cover two. You normally are going to be adjusting those coverages really to the formation, right? And so defense is also like at the, at the core, very customizable. For example, this route combo at a corner strike, we'll show a little bit more offense here. That route combo is not really good as it is, but the doesn't mean the play is not good. We have that short corner. We can kind of do a lot around the play. That's kind of how defense is, right? Um, you know, cover three might not be good, but outside thirds might be really good. So then customizing with maybe cover three hard flat, shade down the yellow so they play underneath. You're doing something, right, to make the defense play better. So having a good blitz having smart adjustments is really the fundamental aspect to playing good defense in Madden. Now, of course, um, I don't want to forget to mention one of the most underrated aspects of playing good defense in Madden is the ability to stop the run consistently, the ability to, and then the ability to use her well. Now, if you kind of roll all the tape back and we just kind of simply ask the question, you know, what are some of the keys to having a good defense? Number one, fundamentally, it has to be able to create good pressure. Typically, that's going to come in the way of a four, five, or six-man pressure blitz that is going to force your opponent to block a running back. And in an ideal world, they're going to have to max protect ultimately as well, right? Those are some of the mainstay like, these are the keys to blitzing, okay? Another thing that's really important is you really want your defenses as a whole, you really want them to all kind of look the same, right? You want all your defenses to look identical or at least be able to give the same pre-snap picture but then do other things, um, you know, other things behind the snap, right? So, for example, here doing these backed off clouds out of a cover three shell, you know, stuff like that. Like you want to be able to have the same basic pre-snap look 
and then do different things off of that pre-snap look, right? For example, here, you know, now we're going to go to a, a super, super heavy, um, super, super heavy blitz look. Let's find another adjustment here. But all of this is relatively pretty much the same, the same look. And we like absolutely blew the coverage there, but, but in general, you see what I'm saying? Now, the other thing that is really important, especially at the highest, the highest level you could go defensively is the ability to understand why your adjustments need to, why and when to change the picture. Okay. That's a key statement. Why and when to change the picture. So you're going to have like your stock, like this, for example, is my kind of standard defense, my base defense. I could do this and this is pretty much what I'm going to run. There are going to be times at the highest level where you're going to be forced to change that picture. And so what you want to understand, and this is where the systematic approach kind of comes in into play. If we talk about defense, why does your base defense get beat? That is super important. So where is this defense vulnerable? Really, it's vulnerable to the sideline there uh, on the left-hand side. Um, it's, it, you know, my user is in the middle on an island. There's reasons why. So what you want to do is you want kind of in a, in a similar sense to like offense. When I teach offense, I talk about power counter constraint. My power play is going to really attack a certain area. So like if I'm using double corner, there's very specific things they can do, you know, to basically attack this uh, or to defend this. If they don't do those things, then there's really never a reason for me not to run double corner, right? But as a game progresses and you're playing against a good opponent, they're going to do they're going to know how to stop you. Right. So then it becomes essentially kind of a game of chess and a game of if this, then that equations where you're saying, OK, you know, I'm anticipating that you're going to do this. And so I'm going to counter that with this setup. And that's why the counter setup is so important, because if they're setting up to stop corner strike, but we run Durham. Right. That's kind of the the idea where you have two really powerful plays. Well, it's the same kind of concept really defensively, if you think about it, in the sense that what we're trying to do is we're going to have a base defense that is good against the majority of things that people want to do. There might be little bitty tweaks here and there to the coverage on the back end based off of the specific formation we're playing. But in general, we're going to have kind of like some basic things that we want to do defensively. And then off of what they are doing, we are then going to be able to change that post-snap picture and adjust. And so the reason that's significant is as you're kind of constructing your base coverages, your, your, your base coverage shells, you need to be intentional so that you're not really running the same coverage shell five different ways. That is super important. So, for example, one thing that you have seen me do in this game is when we call DB fire, what I like to do at a DB fire, especially on early downs, is put those soft squats in a cloud flats. What that's going to then do is it's going to take away kind of that intermediate sideline, especially if I back them off, it's going to take that away pretty well. And then it's going to force my opponent to throw underneath. But I'm also mixing in this free safety zone blitz, where what we do out of the free safety zone blitz is we're actually shading underneath so that we can defend, you know, hard flats and, and things like that, right? So like right here, for example, we'll go to DB Fire 2, we'll back off these outside guys, we'll turn them into cloud flats, and essentially what we're going to be trying to get our opponent to do is throw the ball underneath. We're obviously going to lurk a little bit more high to low, force them to take that underneath, and kind of, you know, essentially make them be patient offensively. Then what we might do situationally here, say, okay, you know, now we're going to change that post-snap picture. So now we're only going to send a four-man blitz, so we're not sending five. But we are taking away those hard flats, and we're getting a little bit more middle-of-the-field coverage with that safety and that hook curl and that middle third defender. So the cover three coverage is really kind of countering the cover two coverage, if you think about it like that. Another thing that we can do that is really underrated is we could put in our audibles, we could put, if I can find the play, we could put this cover three cloud in our audibles. So why would this cover three cloud be good? Well, if I'm, I'm out in free safety, but I'm going to audible to cover three cloud, now we're going to play a little bit more of a shed defense. 
you know, and this is going to be really good for now we're not really blitzing anybody, right? We're playing a drop eight coverage. So if they start to block a lot of people, this is a way we can kind of get an extra uh, additional player in coverage and oftentimes still get better, much better sheds than what I got right there, right? Now, again, same exact pre-snap picture, but now we're going to send four, right? And so now we're going to play a little bit more aggressive with this free safety zone blitz. And you see it's going to do a really good job. So now that we have him on a second and, and you're going to see like real time what this would look like. But now watch. So I shaded up, right? So the, these yellows, these stuff's going to play super over the top. So now we're going to get him down. And now we got him on a third and eight, right? So now what do I want to do on a third and eight? Well, I want to go through and I want to play a little bit more underneath. It's actually going to show us the play card because I think I have film study. And we're going to try to lurk that because that's what he just threw to. Ends up throwing to it anyway and catching it. And now we're going to go to DB Fire 2, and we're going to do something we don't normally do, which is we're going to shade underneath. We're going to shade underneath, um, get super, super aggressive with this coverage here. And you see kind of the systematic element of the defense. And we almost get a stop right there. Wasn't quite able to get the stop, but we almost did. And then occasionally, you know, we can even mix in something like this, right? So this looks just like – what we'd been doing out of some other stuff, but now we're going to go to, you know, maybe a cover zero. So it's just the idea. And of course we're going to call it at the wrong time. He's going to get a screen on us, but that's just the idea of if this, then that equations, if this, then that equations that we're using to make decisions about how we're playing defense. That is really what we're kind of trying to do at the, at the most fundamental and core level of defense is we want to have blitzes and this year, probably one of the best, um, just, just in terms of the way it all played out, Dollar was really good this year. And the cool part about defense this year was the way you would pick up the A-gap blitz from free safety zone blitz really left you vulnerable to the DB fire blitz out of a send five look. You could send six from that look as well from spinner. And so there was a lot of different ways to create pressure from dollar this year, more so than what we've probably seen in the past. So the reason that that's helpful in terms of the overarching system is you're kind of matching those, you kind of have a lot of different ways to get to coverages as well within that, right? The double Mabel coverage in the, in the free safety zone blitz, you know, shade down yellow coverage, a little bit different covers, different things, right? So, a lot of defense and a lot of this making defense more systematic is understanding, okay, I have, you know, a really good blitz. And, and, and really typically defensively, what we've seen historically in Madden is a four to five man pressure that really takes away the flat zones, like the underneath flat, and then challenges kind of those vertical routes. That's really the core coverage. And I'll show you how to get to it on the next drive from a couple different things we could do. And then from that base coverage, then what your opponent's going to start doing is they're going to start hitting you in the seams. They're going to start being able to hit you in that intermediate sideline. And so you need to have kind of a plan for how you're going to cover those as the game kind of develops. But fundamentally, your main coverage is going to essentially just eliminate the quick throws and the big one-play score type stuff, kind of play a little bit of a bend but don't break, and then situationally, you'll be able to take away those intermediate routes, you know, again, just based on kind of what, what they're doing. And all this is kind of essentially combined together from the framework of a good four to six man pressure that you can kind of rely on, right? Obviously, from there, we kind of stem out and we say, okay, then we got to, you know, maybe find some run, run shoots, uh, stuff like that, that we need to kind of like just at least be prepared and equipped to be able to handle most runs. Uh, RPOs are now probably here to stay, and they're very good this year, and they will be very good going forward. So you've got to have kind of a plan for you know how you're going to play RPOs, uh, which is super, super important. And then really, you know, you have a blitz, you have kind of your base coverages, and then you kind of have like your, your alternate defenses or alternate shells. And then – um, one of the other things that's super important, I must have secure tackler on him. One of the other things that's really important is the ability to, you know, basically adjust on the fly, right? Situational adjustment. And a lot of that comes down to, I don't know why I handed that off. Um, so we'll show you what I'm talking about kind of here. So 
take a look here at this dollar defense. So at the core level, we have this free safety zone blitz play, but then we can go to this DB fire too, and we can run a couple different versions of the coverage. So one of the versions of kind of the mainstay, this was more of a popular adjustment last year, uh, but was really good, was basically to do a coverage that looked like this right here, right? So you see what we're doing is we're, we're hard flatting one side, we're cloud flatting the other side, and, but that's a press cloud flat, so it's going to play more so like a curl flat zone uh, where it's going to kind of midpoint, right? That's the idea. So essentially what we're doing, you know, by running this, this, this coverage is we're really limiting what they can do in terms of attacking us quickly. And we're forcing them to have to attack us in that intermediate area of the field, which oftentimes is harder to hit when you're under pressure, right? It's easy to throw a corner route if they're playing maximum coverage and they're not really taking away the, the, the corner route, right? Where it's much harder to hit that is when you're under duress. So like right here, you see how we're going to kind of craft this pressure. We're taking away this, this hard flat. Another thing we could have done was run cover two there, but that's send five, pretty good for this double set. And he's going to throw right into coverage. And we have... Every ability known to man, but we still can't get it. So, you know, here, third and 12. Now, again, we are in a little bit of a different situation in the sense that, you know, we're end of half type stuff. But typically, this is a pretty good coverage, pretty safe coverage here. Just shaded up those cloud flats. You really have to kind of thread the needle on the outside. He's not in a formation that really threatens me from a passing perspective. You know, so I'm able to be a little bit more basic in terms of my my approach, but like right here, you know, we're going to go to this and he's just going to run a basic fullback dive. It's kind of, this guy's calling some really weird stuff and uh, it's kind of interesting. But again, those are some of the, the principles to putting together systematic play calls. You know, situationally you might, but, but again, it all kind of stems from the fundamental principle of having a good blitz being able to take away as much space as possible, which is super important. We haven't dove into that too much. Save that for the second half here. And then also being able to make every defense you run look fairly similar, if not exactly the same, so that it is difficult for your opponent to understand what you're doing. Because if offense knows what you're doing, it's kind of like in baseball – if a batter knows that you're going to throw a fastball, it's a lot easier to hit than if he's worried about your curveball, your changeup, your slider, and your fastball, right? That's kind of the same idea in terms of this. So we want to be able to say, okay, we might run cover two hard flat. We might run cover three hard flat. We might run cover two cloud. We might run, um, you know, an all-out man look, right? We, we want to be able to constantly change that post that picture. Uh, that is super, super important, especially – the more high level Madden player that you play because at the highest of levels, it really comes down to maybe one or two missed reads a game that is going to really ultimately determine, you know, kind of what ends up happening in terms from a scoreboard perspective. So like that is super, super important. And hopefully you don't miss, miss what I'm saying with all that. So offensively, it's a little different. Offensive is really just more about, as I miss a C route, uh, offense is just truly more, it's just more about reads. If you make good reads, now defensively, you know, if you're consistently making good adjustments, you know, that will play out. But offense is, is in my opinion, is a little bit more just kind of coming down to executing your offense. Whereas defense, I feel like it's way more about calling the right adjustment at the right time. You know, and obviously never putting your defense in a position where it's fun, it's fundamentally not sound. Uh, this is something that doesn't get talked about a lot. We talk about you know having good route combos, right? And there aren't, there's not a lot of good, or what I would say is there's a lot of good route combos. There's not a lot of great route combos, right? There's really about ten to twenty what I would consider great route combos every single year. Defensively, it's kind of like that too. There's a lot of good ways to play defense, a lot of decent adjustments that do specific things. But at the end of the day, there's really some great defenses 
And you really want to be calling those way more, right? All right, so he's going to go to spread here. And we're just going to play a little more basic, see what he's doing. Looks for a cover three beater, but he's going to throw a streak. Almost hits me. So, you know, another thing is, you know, you're kind of looking for, you know, okay, you know, what's open. So like right there. And this was that coverage I was kind of talking about. We're just doing it from a backed off look. But it's that send five with that hard flat, that cover three shell, cover three. But what's well, essentially like it's a roll coverage. Now here we're actually just going to try to protect the sticks, just force everything over the middle at our user. Another thing that doesn't really get talked about enough in, 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 in Madden defensively is the idea um, that you have uh, a user and how to use your user situationally. It's so like fourth and 19, we're going to use her a lot differently than if it's third and, and whatever. So like my main goal here is I'm just trying to take away this, this yellow zone right here. No, 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 no. We take all of that. We're going to force you to have to make a crazy play with your quarterback, right? That's a pretty good example. Fourth and 19, we're not going to give up any big throw. We're going to make you earn it with some kind of crazy play, right? Put yourself in a risky position where you might fumble, that kind of thing. Whereas if that was a third and 12, you'd be a little bit more apt to try to maybe contain that quarterback a little better. So – you know, things like that. This guy's getting kind of crazy pressure from Aaron Donald. And Aaron, Don Aaron Donald, I don't know how he's doing it, but he's just coming in. So let's go with the uh, RPO. Run commits. <laughs> he ran commit on RPO. I would never, ever advise doing that unless you're going to use it as a bubble. So those are some of the ideas uh, that I have in terms of making defense as systematic as possible. There's a lot more to unpack with this, but it really comes down to having you know, consistent, good adjustments and a really good blitz.